gorillas in the Virunga National Park. That was my objective. You are in, Jim Afel. I started from Goma, a dusty volcanic town on the shores of Lake Kivu in the DRC. I was driven to the park boundary by armed rangers due to rebel kidnappings and local extortion attempts. A local with a shovel demanded a road tax to drive past his hut. At an elementary school, we parked and set off across cultivated fields on foot. These mountains are where Diane Fossey was based during her famous primate research. And now, there are seven gorilla families that are habituated to human visitors. This morning, I have sent one team of trackers who will use maybe half hour from here to the place where the gorilla are. Before entering the park, the gorilla rules were explained to me. Wear a mask because they can catch human diseases and keep your distance. Don't touch, eat, smoke, or use flash photography. And most of all, no direct eye contact with the big man. The gorillas are exposed to visitors for an hour a day. And in that hour, I watched them as much as they watched me. The males were particularly attentive. They continuously ate while moving slowly as a loose group. It seems like life for mountain gorillas is eat a lot, grunt a bit, and move along. <laughs> These mountains are the silverback gorilla's last habitat. Only approximately 800 remain in the world, and they can be found only here or in zoos. Unfortunately, the habitat is under attack from poachers, armed insurgents, and the British oil company Soko International, who want to undergo oil exploration in the park. It was important for me to see these guys in the wild before they disappear forever. After an hour of watching them eat, grunt, and move slowly as a group, it was time for me to head back. It was an hour of a lifetime. <laughs>